What's up guys? Justin here with B Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of getting started rendering inside of Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so when we talk about rendering, um, what we're talking about doing is we're talking about using Rhino um, and taking our models and actually applying light to them in order to simulate like the way that light would bounce and the way that materials would uh, interact with light. And what that does is that gives us a more realistic version of how our model might look in the real world. So um, first off, when, when we start off, inside a Rhino, generally speaking, you're going to be modeling in either like wireframe mode or you're going to be in like shaded mode or something like this. And so there's different styles that you can use inside of Rhino using this little drop down right here in order to get different things. So one thing, for example, is inside a rendered mode, let's say that we had an object and I'm just going to apply like a red material to it right now. So I'm going to turn the reflectivity down just so it looks red. But notice how those materials only start showing up when you jump into either like rendered mode or some of the other modes that we have in here. So rendered mode is basically going to give us a preview look of a little bit of shading. Um, it's kind of like high level as well as a little bit of what the materials might do inside of the real world. So you can actually see what those are. However, to get the real full result of what the rendering is going to look like, you're going to go into ray traced mode right here. And so when you go into ray trace mode, the first thing you're going to notice is you're going to start getting a little bit of noise in here. And so that's because this is actually coming in here and now it's uh, simulating the way that light would work. So notice how you're getting a little bit of red coming out of this coming off of this object right now. And so the reason for that is because in the real world, right, um, the red material actually kind of like comes down and bounces off of surfaces and you can see that. So this is actually simulating what light would do off of different materials based on their properties inside a Rhino. Now, one thing you're gonna notice about this is every time you move, this is gonna come back in here and re render, right? So it's rethinking right here. You might also notice your computer kind of heating up a little bit. The reason why is because this is actually doing more complex calculations in the background to actually simulate what light is going to do in this area. So that's how you switch to rendered mode. Um, you can just drop to this drop down right here and you can actually go into ray traced in order to get your render. So we're gonna jump back into just regular rendered mode for right now and take a look at a few other things. All right, so now let's jump over into the render tools tab right here and take a look at some of the other options that we have in here. So first off, when you jump into render tools, notice how there's a number of tools over here for things like actually creating a rendered image. So if I was to click on this right now, right, it's gonna pop up a window and it's gonna go through and it's gonna do a rendering. And then once it's done, and notice how it's going through and it's working on this right here, once it's it's done, I can take that image and I can save it, right? So you can use this in order to save rendered images on your computer. You can also do a preview render. So for example, let's say that you don't want to switch your viewport over to ray traced mode for whatever reason, maybe you've got a slower computer or something like that. Well, what you can do is you can click on the render preview button and that's actually going to come in here and do a preview render of what this might look like right here. So it's going to be kind of a lighter weight. Notice how it did less samples that are in here, but you can kind of preview what your final image would look like by using these tools right here. You can also adjust things like your render settings, which is going to allow you to set like your resolution, for example, of the exported image. It's also going to let you change some other things like your backdrop and other things like that. I don't want to get too far into that right now, but notice how, for example, if you wanted your backdrop to be dark, you could come in here and you can set that using these settings right here. There's some other really important settings in here that we're going to talk about a little bit later. And actually, while we're in here with our render settings, let's take a look at some of the things we can use in order to adjust the lighting inside of our scenes. So first off, notice how there are options over here for creating different kinds of artificial lights, which we're going to mess around with in just a second. But for now, because we have our render settings turned on, let's scroll down and look at the way the lighting is being applied to our model right now. Right now, what this is doing is this is using the built-in Rhino environment right here in order to light your scene. Notice how you can adjust the strength of the lighting in here by adjusting this value. So notice how if I bring this up, my scene gets brighter. If I bring it down to like 0.25, my scene gets darker. So you can use this to adjust the strength of the light coming off of the studio. Now, if you don't want to use the skylight, what you can do is we're going to uncheck skylight. We're going to check the box for sun. And so what that's going to do is that's going to let us use an artificial sun inside of our scene in order to light the scene. And so notice how we're having an issue right here. It's just not lighting very well. What we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to adjust 
our sun settings like this. So we can use this in order to adjust where our artificial sun is coming from. So notice how we can adjust things like the direction as well as things like the angle if we were to toggle manual control on. So notice how right now, for example, we can adjust this so that our sun is actually lighting our scene like this. And so notice how I can adjust the direction that my sun is coming from right here. And because we have this in here with these back walls in here, notice how if I adjust it this way, my sun is actually coming from this back direction right here and it's being blocked by this wall. So you can use this in order to adjust um, the artificial light if you do wanna use the sun. You can also bump things like the strength of this in here by adjusting the intensity just like this. Notice how if you turn manual control off, you can actually set your lighting based on a certain time. So both a time of day, right, like this. Notice how you can adjust these sliders to simulate a certain time of day based on a certain location. So for example, let's say that I was to pick Denver right here and click on OK. Notice how we can adjust this to that certain time of day right here using these settings. And we can get into this more a little bit later, but just note that you can use the artificial sun to light your scene. You can also use the skylight. And then there's another option in here to add different kinds of lights into your scene as well. So for example, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move this over just a bit. Let's say that we wanted to add an artificial light in our scene. So what we can do is we can come in here and we can set a point light right here. And so notice how when we do that, and I'm gonna jump back into shaded mode for just a second, so I can select this and move it around. But let's say that I was to move this point light to a location, maybe like right here. And we could actually set this up if we wanted to with a rendered mode right here so that we could see this, but then we could also move it around in our other viewports. But notice how when I move this up and down, it's actually casting light in my scene. And so we can adjust things like the intensity. Like if I bring the intensity down like this, it's gonna have a certain amount of brightness. You can also apply like a color to it if you want to. So if you wanted this to be a little like yellower or something like that, you can adjust that. And notice how the light being emitted by this object is going to be that color. And so in addition to adding a point light, which is just basically a point in space that emits light, right? It's just coming from wherever this point is. If we wanted to instead, we could apply a spotlight. And so a spotlight is going to have a direction associated with it. So let's go ahead and let's take this and let's move it up a little bit. And so basically what a spotlight is going to do is it's going to have a point and a direction associated with it. So this light is pointing in this direction right here. And notice how we're getting a shadow behind it. And so you can adjust the properties of this light using the gumball tool right here. So notice how I can set it so that it um, is wider or narrower like this. One thing to note about this, by the way, is you're gonna get a very different result if you go into ray traced mode. Um, like notice how when you're in rendered mode, what this is doing is this is giving you a very hard edge in here of where that light would be affecting things. But if you jump over into ray trace mode, you're gonna get a much smoother result. And notice how the light from this, uh, this spotlight is kind of like bouncing out around the edges, just like this. So you can use these different lighting types in order to add artificial lighting in your scene. So another kind of light that you can create is a rectangular light, right? Because right now, this is a point with like a circle coming off of it. But let's say we wanted to create another light, like this one, and we're gonna move this, I'll just move it up for right now. But notice how this light is going to be more rectangular and it's gonna shine in a certain direction. And so if I move that over here, and let's go ahead and let's get rid of our spotlight for a minute. So we're gonna delete our spotlight out like this, and then we're just gonna look at our rectangle light. So if I move my rectangle light over, notice what that's doing is that's emitting light from this entire rectangle in here. And you can adjust the size just like this if you decide that you wanna do that. So I can make it bigger or taller or bigger or smaller but those rectangle lights are going to cast a more like wide light as opposed to something that has kind of like that circular direction associated with it. And so the other thing you can do is you can also adjust the strength of this light in the same way, right? So you can just select it and go into its properties and you can adjust the intensity up or down. So you can use this to really kind of control um, the size and intensity of this light in your scenes. So we take the whole thing 
move it around like this. And what this is gonna allow you to do is this is also gonna allow you to create multiple different lighting setups, right? So if I was to like copy this light right here, move it around, notice how we can use this in order to create different lighting setups. Like I can create one and two point light setups. Whoops. I'm gonna make sure I only have the one selected. Right here, there we go. But notice how you can use this in order to combine different lights together in order to create these rendered images. And so for right now, I'm just gonna take us back to using the environment for our scene because that's gonna give us the best result. So we're just gonna turn the skylight on. We're just gonna put it to a value of one. That's gonna probably be the simplest way to do this. But now I wanna talk just a bit about materials because materials are going to act different ways inside of Rhino depending on what you want them to do and what their settings do. So we can access the materials by jumping over into our object properties and going to material right here. And right now we just have a custom material applied to this object. So if I click on this though, I can create a different custom material just like this. And then I can change the properties of that material, right? So I can give it a color. So for example, we can give this kind of a darker green material. And so for this object right here, we've applied this green material. Let's say we had another object in here though. So I'm just gonna take this and move it over. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add maybe like a sphere. So we'll add a sphere in here. We're gonna move this up a little bit. And for my sphere, I'm gonna create a different material, right? So I can come in here and I can do that using this drop down right here. And I can either import a physical material, I can create a custom material, or I can create any of these kind of presets right here. So let's say for example, that we wanted to set this to be like a paint material. Well, I can just click on the paint and then I can adjust the color, right? And so that's gonna have kind of a preset associated with it. So. If I change this to blue, for example, notice how this is going to use the preset paint material and its settings in order to render this out. And so if I was to jump over into ray trace mode, notice what I'm gonna get on this object is I'm gonna get kind of a glossy material that's applied to this, right? So it's acting like kind of a shiny paint would in the real world. So we can use a ton of different um, presets or we can create our own objects in here so let's say for example, that we had a copy of this over here and we wanted to create another new material that was more of a plastic material right here. So if I click on plastic and let's set this to maybe more of a red material right here. Well, notice how when I jump over into ray trace mode, each one of these is going to look a little bit different inside of my scene, right? So this one is giving me more reflections right here, where this one is kind of like diffusing the edges around the outside a little bit more. So notice how this is very clear in the way that it's reflecting. This one's a little bit more fuzzy. That's because my different materials are being rendered in different ways based on their properties. And so we can also apply materials and I'm gonna jump over into rendered mode real quick. We can also apply materials from the Rhino material library in here. So let's say I was to do like a control shift click right here and select this floor face. Well, we can come in here with our materials, use a new material, and we can use a material from the material library that's built into Rhino. And so when we do that, notice how that's gonna give us access to all of these different materials. And in this case, I'm gonna apply a tile material. So maybe like this large paver tile right here. So I'm gonna apply that to my surface. Well, notice how now that texture material is showing up in here. So if I was to jump over into ray trace mode, right here. Notice how this is now going to render this out with this texture on this surface right here. So you can apply colors, you can apply presets, and you can also apply textures or materials to your renderings. So that should give you kind of a general idea of how you can start setting these up. The other thing I wanna do is let's say that I wanted to export an image. So let's say that I really like this image. And before I do that, let's go ahead and pick a different material for this one maybe a plaster material on here. But let's say that I really like this image and I wanted to export it. Well, all you would have to do to do that is we can just jump over in here and we can just click on the button for render. And so when we click on render, what that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up our window and it's gonna be sized whatever we set in our render settings. So let's say for example, I wanted this to be um, 1280 by 720. Um, so we can go into our render settings and we can set the size of our viewport to whatever we want. Maybe we'll do 1280 by 960, but that's now going to be the size of the image that's exported. 
And so in addition, you can also set the quality. So notice how in our scene right now, it just doesn't look very high quality. So part of that is we probably need to bump the uh, power of the studio up a little bit um, because we probably don't have enough light in here, which is probably affecting this render. And so you can bump up the strength of the intensity over here, but then I also want to adjust my quality to either good or final. Notice how when you select good or final, what that's going to do is that's going to affect the number of samples that this takes in your final render. So if I jump over here to my render, if you remember previously, this rendered out at like 50 samples. And a sample is basically, this is going through and it's just like recalculating this and recalculating the light. So it's just calculating the number of bounces. The more samples you have in here, the longer this is going to take, but the better your result is going to look. So notice how as it does this, you're starting to get less and less noise in here. There's some other things we can do in here too with denoising and other things that I don't want to get into in this video. But in general, this is going to go through and this is going to just keep sampling this out until it gets to sample number 1500. You can spend a lot of time waiting for your images to render. Um, in this case, I'm going to let it run for a little bit longer, and then we're just going to stop it. But as this renders, we can also add some different effects in here. And so we can do things like adding different tone maps if we go in here. So for example, if I switch this over to like a filmic, notice how this looks a lot better than if I had in here as clamp. So you can kind of play around with these in order to uh, adjust the way that your final render is going to look. But you can also add different effects in here by clicking the plus button right here. So depth of field is a good one, for example, because what it's gonna do, and I'm going to adjust this real quick, is notice how it's going to basically simulate the way that a camera um, focuses on things that are close or far away. And so what you can do is you can use this in order to have a really strong, clear, depth of field effect right here. And notice how everything in the background is kind of blurry. So I could also set a different object to be my focal point right here. So if I wanted this to be my focal point, I can set that on this point right here. And then you can adjust the blurring strength. Notice how I'm getting a blurry effect on areas that aren't at this distance from the camera. So there's a bunch of other things that you can adjust in here as well, which again, we're not gonna worry too much about for right now. We can definitely talk about them in the future. But then finally, when you're done, um, we're just gonna click on the stop button right here. When we click on stop, it's going to stop rendering. Well, then you could take that image and you could save it by clicking on the Save Image As button right here. We'll just call this Render 1. And that's going to save this as an image that you can open outside of Rhino. All right, so that's like a very high level sprint through the different rendering features inside of Rhino. We can talk about these more in depth in the future, but I wanted to give you that overview. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.